This way, please. The other form of government is a republic, where it's a rule by law, where the 1% is protected from the 99%, equal protection for all, and a level playing field for free market capitalism to, f to flourish. And the elite are kept in check from the division of power. Liberty is not a means to a higher political end. It is itself the highest political end. Lord Acton. Once democracy takes over, overtakes the Constitution, the public, special interests, corporations, and even the government itself destroys the economy, our freedoms, and eventually leads us to an oligarchy, or rule by the elite. When all else fails, vote from the rooftops. Democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for lunch. Liberty is a well-armed lamb contesting the vote. Ben Franklin. So there are only really two choices for government. Rule by the elite or rule by law. And our political system in reality looks more like this. Communism, dictatorship, Nazism, monarchy, socialism, oligarchy, fascism all represent total government. And we have seen how anarchy eventually leads back to total government or oligarchy. Whereas the republic can fall only fall in a limited government and that's represented by constitutional libertarians. And from our founding fathers, we have slowly, methodically, patiently been slipping towards total government power as we lose more rights, more freedoms, and more of our wealth. Suppose you want to take a broad view of history for a moment and of geography. You cannot find a date in history with which the greater part of the human race was not living in a condition of tyranny and misery and dictatorship. Take it right now. The bulk of the human race is not living in a free world. The bulk of the human race is living in totalitarian or dictatorial government. Resistance is futile. The state is that great fiction by which everyone tries to live at the expense of everyone else. Frederick Bastiat. All of these isms can be put into one ism, collectivism. Collectivism is the belief that the group is more important than the individual. The government would be justified in any act against individuals so long as it said it was benefiting the greater good. There will always be a psychopathic elite at the top determining who shall be sacrificed, and they will not stop until all are sacrificed to fulfill the desires of the elite. Collectivism is the antithesis of individual liberty and what this country was founded on. The problem with socialism is you eventually run out of other people's money. Margaret Thatcher. Power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Lord Acton. So under a collectivist system, there's a small group at the top that determine and control all aspects of our life. Freedom is government divided into small fragments. Thomas Hobbes. Under a constitutional republic, the constitution would provide protection for all the aspects of our lives and also divide the power into many different fragments so that no one branch would become strong enough to overrule the other ones. Whereas labor, finance, business, and media, and education would be outside the government's scope, even inside the government, the federal government would fall mostly on executive, legislative, and judicial, and military matters. But that would be balanced by the 50 individual states who would also have their own militias, courts, cities, counties, and their own police system. And all of them would work together in a balance of power. Socialism is the philosophy of failure, the creed of ignorance, and the gospel of envy. The inherent vice of capitalism is the uneven distribution of blessings, whereas the inherent virtue, virtue of socialism, even division of misery. Winston Churchill. Professor Friedman, let me, let me ask you what may turn out to be a long and rather convoluted question. You've said that um, the objectives of the people who have created social security programs, of the people who want to provide for the aged, who want to provide for the poor, who want to achieve objectives that uh, have been identified with minimum wage and, and social security, that the objectives were valid and you share them. Absolutely. Now, if you share them, how would you have achieved those objectives? The only way you can achieve them, how? in my opinion, which is by voluntary cooperative action. You see, I think there's been one underlying basic fallacy in this whole set of social security and welfare measures. And that is the fallacy, this is at the bottom of it, the fallacy that it is feasible and possible to do good with other people's money. Now you see, that, fall that view has two flaws. If I'm going to do good with other people's money, I first have to take it away from them. That means 
that the welfare state philosophy of doing good with other people's money at its very bottom is a philosophy of violence and coercion. It's against freedom because I have to use force to get the money. In the second place, very few people spend other people's money as carefully as they spend their own. You see, that's the great defect in this line of thinking, is that the ideas that have been behind the direction we've been going in is that the people are children who have to be looked after by their paternal, uh, uh, by, uh, by the intelligent intellectuals and governmental officials who can take care of them. The big brother is in Washington and he has to look after people. Now I think it's big brother that has to be looked after and not the people. In troubled times, the fearful and the naive are always drawn to charismatic radicals. And it doesn't matter if it's National Socialism, Democratic Socialism, Marxist Socialism, Fascism, any of these things, they're all collectivist systems. They have the promise of freeing people when in reality all they do is enslave them. Gary Allen completes the picture concerning the true nature of socialism by stating that socialism is not a share of the wealth program, but is in reality a method to consolidate and control wealth. Then the seeming paradox of super rich men promoting socialism becomes no paradox at all. Instead it becomes logical, even the perfect tool for power seeking megalomaniacs. Communism, or more accurately socialism, is not a movement of the downtrodden masses, but of the economic elite.